Did you know? Two decades after its release, one of Super Smash Bros. Melee's weirdest mistakes still isn't fully understood. The oversight in question can be encountered on the Dreamland stage, but only if one player is either Marth or Roy. On the stage, players must wait for Wispy Woods to blink twice in the background. If any player fighting as Roy or Marth performs a jab, forward tilt, up tilt, down tilt, dash attack, or standing grab before Wispy's eyes are closed completely on the first blink, something strange can happen. Regardless of how far into their animation cycle the player is, two frames before Wispy's eyes close completely, Martha or Roy's attack will continue in a very slow and awkward looking way until the animation ends. The attack lasts as long as usual, but the hitboxes will be glitched. One example is that the hitbox for the standing grab appears to extend the full distance, despite the player not lunging forward at all. The inner workings of this oversight eluded players for some time, until a Reddit user named Evson gave a possible explanation as to why this happens. Evson stated that Marth and Roy's blinking animation was somehow linked to Wispy's, with the idea being that if Marth or Roy's blinking animation synced up with Wispy's, and one character performed the aforementioned jab, tilts, or grab, the glitch would be triggered. However, due to some investigation conducted by YouTuber Awesome Sauce, this theory was debunked, and the mechanisms behind the glitch remain unknown. This isn't the only strange oversight in Melee relating to grabs. Another mistake is that Yoshi's dash grab will routinely miss its target. This is because because the hitbox is misaligned on the Z-axis, appearing behind the playing field. Unlocking the camera gives a better view of what's happening. Characters with thinner hitboxes such as Marth and Zelda can avoid the grab simply by standing still, as Yoshi reaches behind them. Super Smash Bros. Melee was the second Super Smash Bros. title produced, and had the shortest development time of any Smash game to date. Possibly due to only having a year of development time, several mistakes like these slipped under the radar and made their way into the final game. Another small oversight has been exploited by some savvy players. In the game's all-star mode, Mr. Game & Watch can heal himself in between the stages in the rest area. By spamming the Judge move, players can spawn a fruit if they're lucky enough to roll a 7, which they can use to heal themselves. As you might expect, this makes battling on higher difficulties much easier. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl and subsequent releases, the oversight was fixed. On the flip side, players could actually damage themselves by using moves such as Roy's Flare Blade within the rest area. This issue would be present in the series much longer than the ability to heal, and wouldn't be a addressed until Smash for 3DS and Wii U, where all damage done in the rest area is negated. One more oversight relating to Mr. Game & Watch is that the character's neutral, back, and up aerials are flagged as special moves, not as aerial attacks. Due to this oversight, these moves cannot be L-cancelled, even though it should be possible to do so, just like with every other character's aerial attacks. This error was also fixed in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Bowser's down throw in the Japanese and North American versions of Melee does zero damage damage to Jigglypuff and Mr. Game & Watch. This is because the down throw does damage dependent on the enemy's weight. And since Jigglypuff and Mr. Game & Watch are so light, they don't actually take any damage. This mistake was corrected in the PAL version of Melee, so that Bowser's down throw does damage to any character, regardless of weight. Another mistake has actually been seen by just about every single person ever to play Melee. It can be found in multiple short videos in the final game, which were recorded during development of the Temple stage. Two platforms that don't exist in the game's final build are present in the video. They even make an appearance in the game's promotional materials. By loading up the special video within Melee, players can see these mysterious beta platforms. They also show up in the short clip that plays after Luigi completes the single-player mode for a split second. But that's not the only place these platforms appear. They're even in the game's manual. Melee also features 290 trophies, and since every trophy is fairly detailed and comes with a paragraph of text, some errors were made. Several mistakes came about from the localization process, such as the Hurlerin trophy being spelled wrong in English. Another error made during localization can be seen with the Great Fox trophy, where its description erroneously states that the Great Fox debuted in Star Fox, when it actually first appeared in Star Fox 64. The correct game was listed in the Japanese version. This slip-up was also fixed in the PAL version, where it was changed to read Lilat Wars, the European name for Star Fox 64, making the North American game the only version with this mistake. The trophy for 
Meta Knight also has a factual error. The trophy says his first appearance was Kirby Superstar, but the Masked Swordsman actually first appeared in Kirby's Adventure. In addition, the name has a hyphen in between Meta and Knight, which is used to distinguish the Meta Knight army and the Meta Knight character. And if you're wondering, the Japanese game lists the correct titles and has the correct name. Naming isn't the only issue, though. His body is silver in the trophy, whereas in Kirby's Adventure and Kirby Superstar, Meta Knight's body is blue. In Melee's Japanese release, the Banzai Bill is incorrectly labeled as the Bullet Bill. Bullet Bills and Banzai Bills are different enemy types. Banzai Bills first appeared in Super Mario World and are bigger, more deadlier versions of the Bullet Bill. In the US and PAL release, the trophy name was updated, but the game origin wasn't fixed, so the trophy has errors in all versions. The Sheriff Trophy has a mistake of its own. It states that Sheriff, the 1979 Nintendo arcade game, was released only in Japan, but this isn't the case. The the arcade title was rebranded as Bandito in the West, and was licensed to a company called Exidy. He's one of the oldest characters in the Smash Brothers series, and would later appear as an assist trophy in Smash for 3DS and Wii U onwards. It seems that even Nintendo had a difficult time remembering when some of their games were released. The Samus trophy in Melee erroneously states that Metroid was released in 1989, when it was released in 1986 in Japan, and the US version was released in 1987. In fact, no Metroid titles were released in 1989 at all. This error doesn't exist in the Japanese version, as there are no dates listed in that version's trophy descriptions. There's also a minor mistake in the Four Giants trophy. The first part of the description quotes Tail, one of the fairies in Majora's Mask, but uses a different translation than what was in the English game. The trophy says, Swamp, Mountain, Ocean, Valley, while in the game it says, Swamp, Mountain, Ocean, Canyon. It's possible that when translating the text for Melee, they didn't check what was used in Majora's Mask, and and instead relied on the Japanese, thus leading to a different interpretation. Luigi's trophy erroneously states that he debuted in the arcade game Mario Brothers, but in reality, Luigi debuted in Mario Brothers for the Game & Watch, which released about three months before the arcade game. Outside of the shared name, both games have no relation to each other. Another mistake can be found in the description for the Master Sword, which says it first appeared in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The sword actually first appeared in The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. The Daisy Trophy's description incorrectly claims she appeared in Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color. This error is due to a mistranslation from the Japanese game which says Daisy appeared in Mario Open Golf. This title was released as NES Open Tournament Golf in the West, and features Daisy as Luigi's caddy. Early versions of Melee also feature an unusual error on Daisy's trophy. If the player zooms in on her hair and looks at the back of her scalp, a third eye can be seen. The trophies even spread misinformation about how Melee's mechanics work. Dr. Mario's in-game trophy states, There's hardly any difference in the abilities of Mario and Dr. Mario, so choosing is largely a matter of taste. Dr. Mario is a tad slower due to his lack of exercise. However, Mario and Dr. Mario have the same in-game speed. Ganondorf, another clone, also had a curious error in the first versions of Melee. In 1.0, if the player had a bunny hood equipped, Ganondorf could perform a second jab. While this was probably a leftover from when Ganondorf was created using Captain Falcon's base, the second jab has no hitbox, so it couldn't actually damage the opponents. The jab was fixed in later versions of Melee. Ganondorf has another oversight that exists in Melee's sound test. Going to the 30th entry for Ganondorf will play the sound effect for Falcon Punch. This was probably also a leftover from when the team used the captain as Ganon's base. As players collect more trophies, they'll be able to see more of the trophy room. If the language is set to Japanese, a virtual boy can be seen next to the plant. Despite being released in the United States, the virtual boy cannot be seen in the English version of the game. Since the Japanese language option doesn't exist in the European version of Melee, this means that European players can never hail the wonderful virtual boy in Melee. The home run contest had several errors that were addressed in subsequent updates of Melee. In pre-PAL versions of Melee, it was possible to hit the sandbag even after it lands, allowing players to score a few extra feet if they could get to the sandbag before the score is tallied up. In the NTSC versions, the counter for how far the sandbag goes will stop updating after 9,999.9 feet. Bizarrely, despite not displaying the full distance, the game will still record the actual distance past this number and update the character's record appropriately. Another thing that isn't visible in-game can be found on the texture for Roy's sword. It actually has copyright information on it. What's interesting is that HAL Laboratory is spelled incorrectly as HAL Laboratory.inc.
Roy has a number of other oddities associated with him. He can't appear in the game's single-player classic mode as a CPU character. Despite this, there's still an intro image for him within the game's files. In the intro image, official art, victory poses, and his portrait in the game's CSS, Roy has a sheath. However, the sheath does not appear during gameplay. Another mistake in Melee can make characters appear entirely black. This dark color scheme is normally only assigned to a single CPU enemy in the event match Link's Adventure to illustrate darkly. Link, but this shade can be seen in multiplayer using a glitch. To see it, the game mode must be set to team battle with four of the same character, all on the same team. The player must then enter the name entry menu and go back a menu at the same time using two controllers. This will cause the game to progress to the stage select screen, letting players start a round under illegitimate conditions. These illegitimate conditions can be several things, such as a player entering a match alone, which will instantly end a stock match as the game sees no opponent has any stocks. But in our in our case, the game will render character 4 with a fully black overlay. This is because when two or more of the same character are on the same team, those same characters have to be various shades of the same color. Player 1 is unchanged, player 2 is lighter, and player 3 is darker. It was never planned by the developers to have four people on one team, but the game loads the next shade in the list regardless. The part of the glitch where players open the name entry menu and go back a menu at the same time is known as the name entry glitch, and it's a very versatile glitch. It can even be used to play as master hand. If the player picks any player for slot 1, then opens the name entry menu without choosing a character on slot 3, then performs the name entry glitch, player 3 will spawn as master hand. And if the player has their controller in slot 3, they can control master hand themselves. Did you also know that Mario's buttons will magically disappear from his dungarees when he performs a sweep kick in Mario 64? Or that an error can be found in Pokémon Red and Blue almost immediately? For more facts about mistakes in Super Mario and Pokémon games, check out the videos on screen.